Seven functions slash formulas to help you out in a job interview or at your current job or even to automate some boring tasks that you need to do on your daily basis in Excel. So with these seven functions, we're going to solve this radical example, this radical problem that I have here. So basically, here I have a stock spreadsheet where I have the date, the location, quantity, unit cost, total cost, and then the product itself. So which rows here corresponds to uh, one specific product that I have. And here in these green cells, I need to solve some problems that I have, some tasks that I need to solve. So let's start here with the first function. However, before we just start, just type in the first function or formula, let, uh, let's understand what uh, we need to do here. So for example, here I have the total cost and as you can see here, it's empty. There's nothing here in the cell of the total cost. So I do not have here the total cost. However, I need to find out what is the total cost. And to find out the total cost, I can use a function or a formula. However, what formula and what kind of function that I need to use here to solve the problem? So let's think a little bit the first thing here. The total cost of something is the quantity that I have of this specific something in my stock, in my inventory, let's say the way. And I need to multiply it by the unit cost. So let's say here the item 001. The total cost of this item is equal to 42 times 76.93, okay? Simple as that. However, how can I just make it a function or make it my dot that I just have in a function? I can use equal sign, select the first cell that I want to use in my multiplication, and then I'm going to use the asterisk, and then I'm going to select the second item that I have, the second cell. So C2 times D2. Quantity times unit cost is equal to the total cost. I can use just two values, quantity and unit cost, or I can even use more than just two, three, four, ten values here. If I just press the Enter key, I have the correct result of the total cost. 42 times 76 is equal to 3000, okay? However, as I just said before, if I have more values to just insert in, I can use the asterisk, select another value, asterisk, select another one, asterisk, and then select another one. I can just select as many as values that I need, as many as cell that I need, and then in between the cells, I just need to use the asterisk, enter, okay? This value is so big that I can even see it, okay, uh, one billion. Besides just using asterisks in Excel, I can use, for example, instead of just asterisk, I can use the function itself called product. This function here can multiply all the numbers given as arguments. So let's say here, uh, let's first just double click here in the product function, equal product, double click it, one, two, okay. What is the first number that I want to use in my multiplication? The first one is the 42, or the unit cost, 76. And then I'm going to press comma, and then I want to select the second number. Simple as that. Close parentheses, and then press enter. So here is the two different ways to make a multiplication in Excel. You just multiply two values, three, four, ten, a hundred different values in Excel. You can use both ways that I just showed to you, okay? So let me just click here in the cell, click, hold, and drag it out to make sure all the rows contain the same function. And we're done. The first task, the total cost. And of course, you can just check manually one specific cell to make sure it is correct. And yeah, it's correct. One value times another, the product, okay? Enter. How can I just solve this second problem that I have here, the total? So here I need to just sum all this entire column, the column E, or the column of the total cost. So I need to sum all the values that make up the total cost. How can I do it? Similar to the previous function, I can use equal sign, select the first cell that I want to include in my sum function, or my sum formula, that is a formula here, equal sign, the first cell, and then instead of just using asterisk to multiply, I can use the plus sign to add values, okay? So plus sign, select the second value, plus again, the third value, plus again, another one, plus another one, and so on. So we just need to select as many cells as you need, and then in between the cells, you can use the plus sign. However, it can take a long time to the cows come wrong, so Maybe it's a good idea to use instead the equal sign, the sum function itself. Equal sign, sum, and then double click it, sum function, okay. I can just 
as the, the product function, select cell by cell. However, here, I just want to click, hold and drag up to select all the range that make up the total cost. If I just press here now, close parentheses, okay, and then press enter, I have here the total of this entire row that make up the total cost. So two tasks are done. So let's move on to the third one, but I need to just solve this problem here. Total amount of different products. How can I make the task? However, what, what is first? What is the different products means? So here I have one product, another one, another one, another one. So one, two, three, four, and so on. So yeah, I kind of understand what I need to do here. I just need to find out how many rows that I have here in my spreadsheet. Well, not the total rows. Uh, I will not include here the, the headers, for example. I just want to include the items. Okay, so I just need to select the items range and it's done. So to just use a total amount of different products functions, for example, I can use the function instead of just manually count row by row, I can use instead equal sign count a function, okay? Let me just double click it. And instead of select item by item, uh, cell by cell, uh, manually, I just want to select the entire range here that make up the product column. Select the entire range and then close parentheses, enter, okay. 18 different items I have. And the cool thing here is if you just need to delete some rows, the, the function count A is going to update for you the total, the result that I got here. So let's say here, uh, the, the rows 7, 8, and 9, and 10, I need to just read off this, this row. So let me just delete it. And look here, instead of 18, I got uh, 14 as result. And it's correct because I just deleted or rows here. It is known that I have a bunch of items here, different items in each one of these rows, and each one of the products, the items, have different unity cost. So if I need to just find what is the average cost, I just need to sum all the unity costs that I have and then divide it by the quantity that I just summed. So let's say here, one, two, three, four. Okay, I need to sum all these four values and then divide the the total result by four okay so simple as that so here I instead of just do it manually because I have a bunch of rows here many rows let's say that way I'm gonna use here the average function itself equal sign average and then double click it to select okay what is the range that I want to make this average and as the sum function as the count a function I can select cell by cell and just in between the cell, I can use comma to separate the values, look here. Or even I can just select the entire range itself one just one time, okay? So it's pretty easy to do it. Let me just select the entire range of the unity cost and then close parentheses, enter. Okay, now I got the result, 77.33. This is the average product ticket price. Another task that I need to complete here is the highest cost in the inventory. So let's say your boss comes to you and, hey, employee, what is the highest cost that we have here in the inventory of the company? So instead of just checking manually, row by row, you can make a function to help you out, just to automate that task. And whenever you just insert or delete a row in Excel or update any value, the function itself is going to update automatically for you. And moreover, your boss don't want to know just what is the highest cost he wants to know what is the, the product itself to, so the cost and the product. So here, let me just, instead of just using one cell to, the, to return the highest cost, I want to use two cells. The first one is the cost itself, and the second one is the name of the product. So for the cost itself, for the value, the number, I can use the equal sign the max function because the max function returns the largest value in a set of values, the highest one, the largest one. Okay, so max, double click it, one, two, okay. Now I want to select the entire column, the just the values of the column total cost that make up this column, okay? So all this value here of the total cost, and then I'm gonna press enter. So the highest value that I have, the largest one is 8K, $8,000 in the stock. So what is the product that have this largest cost in the stock? To find out what is this 
product itself, I can use as reference this value that I got here in the result, and then the VLOOKUP or the XLOOKUP or the HLOOKUP or the INDEX MATCH function. So I can use a lot of functions here. So however, anyway, I'm gonna use the VLOOKUP function because I know not all Excel versions have the XLOOKUP function. So let's stick with the VLOOKUP function because it can solve many, many problems, 99%, okay? At least in my experience, the VLOOKUP function is can help you out in many, many situations. So if you have already the, got the result of 8,000, let's say the way, you can use the VLOOKUP function to search for you the, a, the result that you got in the highest cost in this column right here. And then after that, you can use the VLOOKUP to, okay, so the highest value is this value right here. Then I'm gonna take the second column as my MAT value, okay? This is what the VLOOKUP function is gonna do for you. So, and even if you just change the value, so let's say here, now the item two is the highest cost one. However, it can change. So let's say tomorrow, the item five is the highest, the highest cost one. So this is what you, we're gonna got, get in the result of the, v, the VLOOKUP function. Equal sign VLOOKUP function. Let me just double click it, one, two, okay. What is the lookup value? The lookup value is the result that we got here, just above, the cell above. Comma. What is my table array? My table array is the entire column of the total cost and the product column, okay? So let me just click, hold and drag down all the values that make up these two last columns. Comma again. And what is my column index number? What is this? So here I just select this range, the total cost and the product. So as I just select these two columns, the first one is the column number one, and the second one is the column number two. If I just uh, select more columns, it goes continue to count, so three, four, and so on. However, my product is the column number two. So here, in the column index number, I'm gonna use the number two. Comma, range lookup, I wanna exactly match, so let me just double click it, close parentheses, and then I'm gonna press, Enter. Simple as that. So that result that I got here, 8K, met with the item 002, okay? And if I change, so let's say here the item 9, for example, instead of 82 units in the stock, uh, I just receive a couple more, so I have here in the total 182. If I just press Enter, look what happened here in the highest cost and in the return of the item. Enter. The result of the highest cost and the, the item itself, the VLOOKUP function, just update for me. Now we are in the last task, the last problem to solve. Total quantity in the location D, or location A, or B, or C, or D, or E. So we can change it. And whenever we change here the location, the result is going to update for us. So let's say in this example, in this situation right now, I need the total quantity in the location D. So here I have a column with the location and one with the quantity, the stock. However, just think with me. If I need to sum the quantity that I have here in the location D, I need to just sum this range that I have. However, imagine if we just, if, uh, we just change the location. So instead of D, I'm gonna use A, for example. So instead of just using this range right here for to sum the quantity, now I need to use that range right just above. I cannot do it manually, so instead I'm gonna use the equal sign sum if function. Let me double click here. And what is the difference between the sum if function and the sum function? The difference is not negligible because there is the, there is difference between these two functions, sum and sum if function. The sum function, if I select, let's say, the entire row of the all the all the column of the quantity, the sum function is gonna sum for me this entire range, so it's gonna sum everything. However, if I just use the sum if function, instead of just sum everything, all the range that I selected, I can sum just a specific, specific cells of this range, specific values. So let's say in the sum if function, I can tell to the function, I don't want you to sum everything that I just selected. I just want you to sum the values of the quantity that matches with the location A, for example, or with the location B, or with the location C, for example. So I can define here the criteria, the condition, 
The range, the first thing that the sum if just asks me is the range. My range is the location, because the location is the range where I'm gonna check the criteria, if it's met or not, okay? So, so if it's match or not. Let me just select the entire location, column, and then comma. My criteria, I can just type it in, open quotations marks, D, close quotations marks. However, instead of just uh, tap, type it in manually, because let's say if I just change this value on D for B, for example, the function needs to change, to, it needs to auto-update for me. So instead of just typing in manually, I can make it dynamic. So let me just select the cell here, gamma, and now what is my sum range? My sum range is my all the quantity column. Now we can close parentheses and whenever the sum if functions just match with the criteria that I just insert here, it's gonna sum for me the values that just match it. Enter, okay. So in the location D, I have 84 items, 84 unities. I can change it for location A, for example. Enter, or location B, C, D, E, and location, let's say, A, B, 1, 2. It's zero because I do not have this location here in any column. So let's change it for location D, for example, and OK, we're done. We just saw here seven different functions and one formula to help us out how to solve these problems and to automate all these boring tasks in Excel that can help each of you. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, just comment down below. Okay? Thank you guys for watching this video. And as ever, there has a new video. I see you tomorrow.